Hawe. Welcome back. It's a little warmer and drier under this tent, isn't it? <laughs> I just want to recognize Felicia Ponka. She's our party planner. She is really the one in charge. <laughs> Felicia, could you come out here, please? Felicia made sure we had the tents, the heaters. She made sure that everybody was in their places. She really took care of us very well, and all of us. And so we want to start the day by posting our colors, the American flag, as well as the Osage flag. And to help us with this, we have members of Post 198, which is based out of Pawhuska. And we have Jim Hunt and Charles Big Horse from Post 98, which is commanded by John Henry Mashunkashe. Our singers will sing our flag song, and as they come in, we just ask you to stand as we post the colors. Take it away, singers. As Wajaji people, we are praying people. And so I'd like to introduce to you, to give us our prayer, Tali Redcorn. For those of you who have seen our film, Killers of the Flower Moon, you might recognize him. He is an honorably discharged US Army veteran who resides in Pahuska Indian Village. Tali currently serves as project manager for construction and serves on our Minerals Council, Tali Redcorn. Thank you, Brother Tim. I just want to remind all our guests, uh, Tim Tallchief uh, was the previous head tail dancer for the Basuli people and brought that spirit of, of movement and song into that drum, that center that we, we, we use. So we, 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 you know, we, we are blessed by that at his Osage. So I just want to say thank you to Tim for that. And, beautiful day here raining and so they asked me to say the prayer it's my honor so thank you very much 
bear with me, please. Hain Tatsi, Hain Tatsi, Wakanda, Wakanda, Ijinke. Nia Wasu, Hua, La Bria, Hanekse. Mahe, Mashita, Ink, Shea, De, Lak, E, the Combra, De. Nikas, Shinka, Zani, Nikas, Jutse, Ink, Shea, De, Wajaja, Nikas, Shea, De, Lak, E, the Combra, Ankalia, the Tassilia, Tawan, Ink, Shea, De, Ankalia, Pataha. Nujinka, let's say, the Hampa, let's say, Cardon, Nancy, La, Wastak, and the Nancy, a darling. Wahra don't paden say that say mean say he don't pahade kahika shea ishonke don't paden say. And we ask that you bless this day. We ask that you bless this moment, this movement. And we thank you for these two ladies, and especially one say mean say he, Marjorie Tall Chief, that we put the statue up. And we ask that you. Hold dear, Lord God, all our thoughts and prayers as we move to try to please you in so many ways. We are pitiful. We were told this way. But we come from you. We come lighted down on the red oak. And we ask that you just bless us this day. Take care of all our needs. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. And you may be seated. Tali referred to me by my first name, Timothy. <laughs> Most of you know me as Russ, but my name is Timothy Russell. We gather here today in the home of the Muscogee Creek Nation. Here to offer our land acknowledgement, please welcome Principal Chief of the Muscogee Nation, Mr. David Hill. Thank you, ran off of my book. <laughs> uh, first of all, his chase, don't go and thank you for the invitation to, uh, from the Tom City Historic Society and also uh, Tall Chief Lane. Thank you very much. We acknowledge that the Tall City Historic Society and the Museum on the homelands of the Muscogee Creek Nation, which is a self-governed tribal nation and one of the five civilized tribes. The Muscogee Nation is the fourth largest tribe in the United States with over 100,000 citizens to whom we commit to honor the land and the people to call this sacred place home. Again, I wanna thank the, uh, the family Tall Chief family and Tall Historic Society. Uh, even though it's, uh, it's raining out there, it's still a beautiful day. Thank you. We have a special treat for you from our Wajaji Ballet. Dance Maker Studio is located in Pahuska. And if you talk to Randy Tinker Smith, Jenna LaViolette, who run that program, they will tell you that it is because of Maria and Marjorie Tallchief that they are there. And it's because of Maria and Marjorie Tallchief that these Osage dancers are here today, carrying on their legacy. So we have two performances for you today. We have Celie Grace Card, who will perform the Odette variation from Swan Lake. We'll Will you go first, Seely? Is it, or will you go, Liliana? The pas de deux will be first. Okay, so we're going to start with a pas de deux, the dance of the sugar plum fairy. I don't know about you. I see the Nutcracker every single year, and every time the xylophone starts on the dance of the sugar plum fairy, I start to cry. So I may cry during this too. Liliana Hudgens and Xavier Reeves will perform the dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy. Maria Tallchief was the first Sugar Plum Fairy as we know the role today in the beloved holiday tradition, the Nutcracker. Maria appeared in the New York City Ballet's premiere in 1954 at City Center in New York City. And since then, the Nutcracker has become a centerpiece of ballet companies all over the world. Liliana Hudgens and Xavier Reeves are students at Pahuska High School. 
They train at Dance Maker Academy, which is an umbrella organization, along with the Wajaji Ballet under an Osage nonprofit organization named Art Maker. Liliana was a featured dancer in the film Rising Moons by Michael Bearden, a former professional dancer and the current director of the University of Oklahoma School of Dance, where she attended their summer intensive program, which is by audition only. Xavier received a full scholarship to the San Diego Ballet Summer Intensive, which he attended just this past summer. He also performed in Bearden's film, Rising Moons. Both dancers are cast members of Wajaji Ballet.
Wow. <laughs> oh, man. I, that, that really does, it moves me every single time in Tchaikovsky's music. It's just so amazing. Osage ballerina Seely Grace Card will perform the Odette variation from Swan Lake next. Seely is 16 years old and she began her ballet training at the age of three. She studies ballet in San Antonio at the Ballet Conservatory of South Texas. Last summer, she attended the Kansas City Ballet Summer Intensive Program and was invited to join their full-time pre-professional program. Seely Grace, yes, give it up. She's danced in productions of Sleepy Hollow, Swan Lake, Sleeping Beauty, The Nutcracker, La Boutique Fantastique, The Four Seasons, The Awakening of Flora. She's performed uh, The Headless Horseman's Minions, and on and on. She participates in the Osage Elonska dances every year, and she helps cook at her family camp. So ladies and gentlemen, Seely Grace Card. Thank you, Seely. Now we're gonna have a little fun. I'd like to invite our Deposka Onkodapi students to the stage. Deposka Onkodapi is an accredited private school of the Osage Nation. Deposka Onkodapi means our school. The school has students from ages six weeks to seventh grade. And they study the Osage language and culture in addition to their regular curriculum. So 
Yeah, just come on up. Mm -hmm. The students say that they are very happy to be here today to participate in honoring the Tall Chief Sisters. And they have a few songs that they're going to sing to you in Wajaji Ia. Wajaji is the way the French spelled Wajaji Osage. So that's, that's how we came to be the Osage people. O-U-S-A-G-E, Wajaji. And so that's what the French were trying to say. We've been allies with the French for hundreds of years. And so here we are rebranding as it were 500 years later, <laughs> and Wajaji Ia is our Wajaji language. Now, you might know some of these songs, so feel free to sing along, and hopefully you can pick up the words and maybe pick up some of the Wajaji language. I'm Patrick Martin, the director of the school, and I'd like to thank uh, everyone for being here and also to thank Misty Copeland for visiting our school yesterday. We had a wonderful visit with her at school. Her song is Shkashkada Ipaho Nasawa. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands.
last one. This is uh, God Loves the Children. Okay? And that's the Okta Ipaho. Mystico. Thank you, thank you, Deposka. Thank you so much for being here. Be careful. Be careful, it's a little wet over there. Wasn't that fun? And we had a wonderful visit with Misty at Deposka on Friday. We danced together, didn't we? They taught us some dance and she taught them some dance. We're going to take an intermission now. We're going to come back at 3 o'clock, and we have a powerhouse lineup of speakers planned for you. So stick around. We'll see you at 3 o'clock.
We're about to get started with our program. If you know of anyone that's still in the museum, text them or call them and let them know that we're about to begin. I'm going to photobomb this picture. It looks like everyone's making their way down from the museum. Be sure to claim your seats.
Thank you, folks. Mm -hmm. We will stick around for more photos after the program. We have a great lineup of speakers. Our program here will last about 45 minutes. And then afterward, we have more performances by Wajaji Ballet and the Deposka School. We also have activities going on in the museum. The Smithsonian Women's History Museum has helped put together some activities for all ages. Well, welcome back. Today we celebrate Maria and Marjorie Tall Chief Day. But 70 years ago, in 1953, the Osage Nation and the state of Oklahoma celebrated Maria Tall Chief Day. And Maria described the event like a 4th of July celebration with a parade, bunting draped on every house in Fairfax, a ceremony, that was held at the Tall Chief Theater in which she received her Wajaji name, Wachte Tompa, meaning two standards. The name was selected by her grandmother, Eliza Bigheart Tall Chief, to reflect Maria's life in two worlds. First, as an Osage woman who danced to traditional songs composed by Ponca singers. How have you enjoyed the singing today? Beautiful singing today. Thank you, Scott George, putting together a great lineup of singers here. Thank you so much for being here. And secondly, the non-traditional world in which Maria resided as a prima ballerina who danced her way into the hearts of ballet lovers around the world to the music composed by Igor Stravinsky and Pyotr Ilyich Tchaikovsky, among others. Maria's Wajaji name is featured on the 10th coin in the American Women's Quarters program through extensive consultation with master Osage language teacher, Dr. Herman Mogri Lookout, as well as Van Bighorst, the Secretary of Culture, Education, and Language for the Nation, and Chad Renfro, a brilliant designer who we will hear from a little bit later. In collaboration with the Mint, they decided to include Maria's name in our orthography which is our language system, which was developed under the leadership of Lookout. They selected an image from the Firebird, one of Maria's breakout roles, which premiered in 1949 at City Center in New York. Although Maria's headdress arrived 10 minutes before curtain, and choreographer George Balanchine fussed over the costume all the way up until curtain, the Firebird premiered to an audience left paralyzed by the perfection that they witnessed. Then the audience erupted in an applause heard round the world. After nine curtain calls, the theater sounded like a football stadium, Maria said. As long as I live, she said, I'll never forget the roar as the crowd shouted my name, tall chief, tall chief, tall chief, tall chief. Tall chief, tall chief, tall chief, tall chief, tall chief. Can you imagine? Can you imagine stomping their feet, clapping their hands? Maria and Balanchine's relationship, which was both in marriage as well as artistry, forged some of the most iconic roles still performed in ballet today. Swan Lake, Orpheus, the first sugar plum fairy as we know it today. Weren't our young dancers amazing? Weren't they just fantastic? Thank you so much, Wajaji Ballet. Thank you, Randy Tinker Smith and Jenna La Violette. Thank you, dancers. Thank you to the Deposka students for your gifts of song. I'm sure that Maria and Marjorie knew the words to come and get your love but probably not in Wajaji.
the thunderous applause from audiences around the world still resonates today as we celebrate Maria and Marjorie making history once again. One week after the film Killers of the Flower Moon opened to the world, the spotlight returns to our Wajaji people again as we celebrate Maria and Marjorie. As sisters, Maria and Marjorie remained close over the years. Maria married her blue-eyed sailor, Henry Buzz Passion, and their daughter, Elise, grew up in Chicago, visiting with her cousins, Alex and George, on holiday in the French Riviera, New York, Dallas, among other places. Dallas is where Marjorie and George resided for many years and started a ballet community down there in Dallas that's still flourishing today. We welcome those dancers that are here with us today from Dallas. Elise said that her mother embraced motherhood and grandmotherhood with the same passion in name and emotion that she embraced dance. Elise's poetry is read around the world and she continues to bring poetry to students at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago and to unsuspecting masses in the Subway Poetry Series, Poetry Speaks. She will read from her new chapbook, Tall Chief, featuring poems about her mother, both during and after this ceremony. We are so honored to have Elise with us here today. Thank you so much. And she's joined by her husband, Stuart Brainerd. Where's Stuart? <laughs> and her daughter, Alexandra, is here too. Alexandra is named after Maria's father, Alexander Tallchief, who built the Tallchief Theater in Fairfax. He built it during the 1920s. He wanted to bring some much needed entertainment to the city of Fairfax. The Passion family and the Scabine family are in the process of transferring Maria and Marjorie's childhood home to the Osage Nation. And we look forward to that terracotta mansion becoming a new home dedicated to preserving and celebrating their legacies. Mm -hmm. And we pray that the Tall Chief Theater is also restored to its Art Deco grandeur and the two landmarks become destinations once again. Mm -hmm. The Tall Chief Sisters' impact on the world continues to grow as a new generation of dancers and dance lovers stoke the fire of the Tall Chief legacy again with these two momentous acts, the sculpture unveiling and the quarter release perfectly, divinely timed to coincide with each other so that the sisters could celebrate this occasion together. Mm -hmm. The world experienced the divine through Maria and Marjorie Tallchief. They were perfection personified, and not because they were born perfect, but because they worked hard every single day to achieve perfection. As reflected in many of Maria's personal notes, repeated throughout, we found the quote by Antoine Saint-Exupéry. Perfection is achieved not when there is nothing more to add, but when there is nothing left to take away. While Marjorie's statue was taken away briefly, she is reunited with her other indigenous sisters in the sculpture garden, Yvonne Chateau, Maslin Larkin, and Rosella Hightower, and her sister Maria. They were all, all also honored on the dollar coin earlier this year. All five moons were honored on the dollar coin. With the return of Marjorie's statue, the five moons are complete once again. The Osage Nation's commitment to continued support of the garden will preserve and protect these sacred grounds at the Tulsa Historical Society. Now it's my pleasure to bring back to the stage Mr. Cray Beaumont Flynn, Executive Director of the Tulsa Historical Society, to read the mayoral proclamation formally declaring today Maria and Marjorie Tall Chief Day in Tulsa. Please welcome Cray Beaumont Flynn.
proclamation reads, whereas the city of Tulsa acknowledges the profound impact that individuals can have on their communities and the world at large. And whereas Maria and Marjorie Tallchief, renowned dancers and cultural icons, have left an indelible mark on the world of dance, inspiring generations with their talent, dedication, and honesty. And whereas Maria Tallchief, the first Native American prima donna achieved unparalleled success as a dancer and a choreographer, captivating audiences with her grace, innovation, and unwavering commitment to her craft. And whereas Marjorie Tallchief, an accomplished ballerina in her own right, contributed significantly to the world of dance through her professional performances with esteemed companies and her commitment to prom promoting ballet as a vibrant art form. And whereas the Tall Chief sisters, both citizens of the Osage Nation, have brought immense pride to our city and serve as role models for aspiring dancers and whereas the five moon ballerinas dedication to their Native American heritage and their pursuit of excellence have not only enriched the world of dance, but also have highlighted the importance of diversity, inclusion, and cultural representation. And whereas each of the five moon ballerinas continues to inspire generations of artists, dancers, and dreamers to reach their aspirations with tenacity and grace. Now, therefore, I, G.T. Bynum, Mayor of the City of Tulsa, do hereby proclaim October 29th, Maria and Marjorie Tall Chief Day. <laughs> I would, like to, I would like to invite to the stage Chief Standing Bear, Elise Passion, Adrian, and Natalie Skirveen to accept these proclamations. Thank you, Cray. Now I'd like to introduce to you back to the stage, Chief. Don't go too far. <laughs> now in his third term, working to expand the Osage Nation's land base, maintaining its vibrant traditions, and returning the Osage language to daily use. The inclusion of the orthography on this quarter is especially important to the work the nation is doing in language revitalization thanks to the support of our esteemed Congress members. Most of you are present with us today. Thank you so much for your support, Congress. Thank you so much. They all helped this event happen. Now, I'd like to introduce to you Wajaji Gaihika, Principal Chief of the Osage Nation, Jeffrey Standing Bear. Thank you, Russ. Uh, first of all, the Tulshi family, this is an honor to see you all together. Uh, we've seen each other uh, at the dances, and, uh, and, and your family is, a, as you know, one of the great families of the Osage, and I'm glad my family has considered you allies from the beginning, I understand. So I want to uh, also thank uh, the Mohegan chief, uh, uh, Chief Malerba, who happens to be the treasurer of the United States of America, and this quarter here, uh, her and her staff worked hard to make this happen. And Chief, if you don't mind, could you stand up, please? <laughs> We're all very proud of you, too. And uh, maybe. Um, most importantly, you cannot leave here without getting a photo with our Osage Princess, 
Lulu Good Fox. Lulu, stand up, please. When I was sitting here looking this way, I saw Lulu, people were getting photographs with her, and then uh, how proud we are, we all are, of our young people uh, the, and supporting them and the world they're making for us, for, for themselves too. And then, w then behind her over here were those young dancers, and, uh, and I could see that. And then right behind them I saw our singers and as you go along, and then I just turned around, and I looked, looked at all of you, and just to show, to, to me at least, uh, and I want to share that vision that I had to see. It was uh, to, believe, to believe it, because I, I don't think our old people, although they'd be proud of us, would believe all this is happening. We have our young people expressing themselves um, through, through dance and through art, and right there with them is our traditional singers singing songs that are hundreds and hundreds of years old. And it's a blessing to be here. So God bless all of you, and God bless the Osage Nation. Watch your step. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kaiga. And now I'm pleased to bring to the stage a very talented Wajaji interior designer who worked on the design for the coin as well as serving as a consulting producer and ambassador for the Osage Nation on the film Killers of the Flower Moon, Mr. Chad Renfro. I cannot tell you what an honor it is to be up here today uh, with all of you and uh, <clears throat> I'm sure you're wondering what a, an interior designer would have to do with looking at a coin um, or being inspired by ballerinas. But as a young man in Pawhuska growing up, there was a finger woven um, tribute by my Aunt Maudie in the Pawhuska Museum and next to it were pictures of Marjorie and Maria. And I just was in awe of them and how that two worlds that Russ was talking about, how that traditional world and that magical world that I saw um, in those photographs inspired me along the way. So to Nathalie's comments earlier, I try to live every day with that precision and that beauty and that grace. And um, as a, as a uh, consultant on designing this coin, uh, got to see the dollar coin, and it had some of our Osage ribbon work on it, and I said, well, that's only representative of two of the nations that are, are of two people uh, that are on that coin, and so you might want to take that off, even though it's an honor that you're, you appreciate our um, ribbon work patterns. It would not be of service to the other prima ballerinas that were there. And then I took a look at this quarter, and it was Elise's favorite, and it was certainly my favorite because that's the photo that was in the library that I looked at constantly and I gained inspiration from. But her name, Waxetompo, was spelled out phonetically in, with the, in the alphabet. And I said, we have orthography, we have this language program, and I think that you should include that. And therefore, reached out to Chief and to Van and to Uncle Mogri Lookout and for their guidance on how to make sure that that was the properly there. And that's what you see today. And that was my contribution, and I am so grateful. Our next guest, Marilyn Malerba, is the first indigenous woman to serve as treasurer of the United States. In, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In 2010, she became the 18th chief of the Mohegan tribe and the first female chief in the tribe's modern history. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. The position is a lifetime appointment made by the tribe's council of elders. Prior to becoming chief, she served as chairwoman of the tribal council and served in tribal government as executive director of health and human services. Preceding her work for the Mohegan tribe, Malerba had a career as a registered nurse, ultimately as the director of cardiology and pulmonary services at Lawrence Memorial Hospital. Malerba is also overseeing a new office of tribal and native affairs, which will coordinate tribal relations across the treasury department. Ladies and gentlemen, Chief Treasurer Marilyn Malerba. <laughs> We kiski inomak, nad tiu we sung squam a time mutahash wachi mohi kanawak. Greetings, everyone. My name is Chief Lynn Malerba Many Hearts from the Mohegan Tribe. I am so honored to be here today. And I first of all want to thank Principal Chief Standing Bear for your generous time with me the other day. I will consider you me top a friend for years to come. And I appreciate everyone in this room. Um, I say the congressional leaders of the Osage Nation are, have a lot of foresight in the work that they do. I thank all of the family members of, Marie, of the Tall Chief family, Maria and Marjorie, especially Alicia Patchen and her daughter for inviting me to their homelands today for this special day. And I honor all of the very esteemed honorary uh, dignitaries in the front row that I am looking at here. We have you know, a famous actress, we have a famous ballerina, we have Miss Osage Nation. Um, so you are surrounded by people who care about your community and who offer their talents to your community. Um, I want to recognize my colleagues from Treasury, the first office of the Office of Tribal and Native Affairs ever in Treasury, Fatima Abbas, Jim Colomb and Joss Jackson for their very hard work on behalf of all of our Native nations. While I get to stand here, they actually do all the hard work for me, so <laughs> I appreciate them. And I also would like to appreciate the Deputy Director for Mint, Ms. Michelle Thompson, so thank you for being here. But I stand here today as an Indigenous woman celebrating another indigenous woman, and that is very special to me. It is so special to me to see how this day and all of your days are grounded in the Osage culture and history. I appreciate the Wajaje Ballet and the students from Deposka, uh, the Immersion School, for sharing their talents with us. That was very special to hear your language spoken and to see such wonderful dancers. You are all keeping faith with your ancestors by continuing to speak your language and to engage in the arts. You are also leaving footprints on the path for those who will come after you so that they may find their way easily. That's a very special thing to do. As I learned more about Maria Tall Chief and her accomplishments, it seems fitting that her Osage Nation name, which I will not attempt to pronounce because I don't do that well even in Mohegan, um, it, but it is translated as woman of two standards because clearly she learned how to walk in two worlds with grace, style, beauty, and culture. As she noted in an interview, she wished to be referred to as a ballerina, not specifically the first native prima ballerina, and what a great way to say to the world, well, of course Native women can be prima ballerinas. That's, you know, that was really brave of her to say that. Instead of saying, oh, yes, I was the first one, she said, well, but of course they would be. You know, why wouldn't anyone imagine that that could happen? Um, so surely we admire her for and recognize her for being that groundbreaker, that woman who knew what she wanted and was undeterred until she reached her, that goal. Prior to her achieving prima ballerina status, only Russian or French dancers were considered prima ballerinas. So not only was she the first American, she was indigenous as well, and that's so very special and something to celebrate each and every time we think of her. She was a woman of many firsts, but what she achieved meant that these accomplishments would not be the last for indigenous dancers, as you've seen today. Her inclusion in the book, She Persisted, 
13 American women who changed the world comes as no surprise given her stature in our community. My three-year-old and my six-year-old granddaughters love that book and immediately were thrilled when I told them that I would be here today speaking at this event and sharing this moment with you. Today, I honor this strong indigenous woman who comes from a strong indigenous family, who has strong indigenous people who are following the path with her. And I say to you all, many blessings for all of you who will celebrate your Osage community always, who celebrate her always, you keep her with you in your hearts always. And I say thank you for allowing me to speak for a moment. Now, it's my personal pleasure to introduce my cousin, Elise Passion, who is the daughter of Maria Tall Chief and Henry Buzz Passion. She's the author of five poetry collections, and her next poetry book, Blood Wolf Moon, will be published in 2025. Her poems have been published widely, including in Poetry Magazine and a Norton Anthology of Native Nations Poetry. She has edited or co-edited numerous anthologies, including the New York Times bestseller, Poetry Speaks. Dr. Passion teaches in the MFA writing program at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. After our program, Elise will be signing copies of her books, as well as her new poetry chapbook, Tall Chief, which is hot off the presses today. Ladies and gentlemen, Elise Passion. <laughs> On behalf of our family, I would like to express gratitude to all of you for joining us this very rainy day in this celebration of my mother and my aunt. My parents would have been thrilled to witness this spectacular event. Thank you to the U.S. Mint. Thank you, Treasurer. Um, thank you to the U.S. Mint for memorializing the image of my mother on both the quarter and the dollar coin this year. The U.S. Mint closely involves the family with the creation of these coins, and I've been working with the Mint since the summer of 2021. Thanks to those consultants we enlisted, Chad Renfro, along with the Osage Nation Language Department, and to Nancy Reynolds from the George Balanchine Foundation. With gratitude to the U.S. Mint team, especially to Roger Vasquez, Sharon McPike, and Michelle Thompson. For today's celebration, thank you so much to our host, the Tulsa Historical Society, and to one of the co-hosts, the Smithsonian American Women's History Museum. Immense gratitude to the Osage Nation who helped to create this incredible day. Thank you, Chief Standing Bear. Thank you so much. Thank you to Abby, who did a lot of work, and she's behind the scenes, and she's probably behind me somewhere right now. <laughs> Special thanks to my cousin Russ. I am grateful for everything he has done and continues to do on behalf of our family and the Osage Nation. Throughout my life, my mother has served as an inspiration. At an early age, she instilled in me the importance of devoting yourself to your life's passion. As a backstage baby, I was able to witness my mother transform into magical creatures, a firebird, a swan queen, the sugar plum fairy. After she retired from the stage, I watched her create a ballet company in Chicago, transmitting to her students and to her dancers all she had learned as a prima ballerina. As we honor her legacy, I am happy to share three poems I have written about my mother. 
The first one is a memory of my mother dancing Swan Lake. And that, those were such beautiful performances by our Sugar Plum Fairy and her um, prince and by the Swan Queen today. So such gratitude to our, our dancers and the performers today. It's just really our singers, our drummers, just so unbelievable. Swan Queen. Across a lake, my mother floated, a swan, spellbound by day, transformed back to human at night. As a child, with every shift of vibrato, I could predict the enchantment. Let me tell you about a procession of swans, the swish of waves luring beyond the stage, after encores, my mother's face shone when she saw my eagerness curtained behind the wings, her only child, a fairy tale made flesh. Her moonlit face encompassed by ivory swan feathers. Russ talked about um, how our family is in the process of transferring um, my mother and my aunt's childhood home in Fairfax, Oklahoma to the Osage Nation. It's a longer process than we ever expected, but it will happen. <laughs> and um, this is a poem I wrote uh, where I attempted to imagine my mother's childhood home in Fairfax, Oklahoma. Oklahoma home. There was a woodpile fence that kept your garden from schoolyard leaving open to sight the larkspur and lavender-stretched boulevard which skirted your house and the latticework swing set. Running parallel to the street, on its other side, a field bloomed full of asphodel. Your window looked over the meadow. The wind through grass, like a seesaw, seemed to sound out the field, and you would repeat back, Papa, papa, hushed as an owl. At times you'd note the changes of the hour, the catch and call of quails beyond the trees, the pond shaded at four, a patch of blue stem grass where father's horses grazed. From the outside of the house, it was your window upstairs where white curtains, loose with air, would blouse like sails. Evening was the time when all the sounds had quieted. Your father counted stars outside. A coin would rise, an Indian head. Uh, my last poem, you'll notice on your program a photograph of my mother performing in Balanchine's Orpheus. As my mother writes in her memoir, which I highly recommend, um, at the time of its premiere, Orpheus was not only an artistic success, but a historic milestone. Because of this performance, the New York City Ballet was created in 1948. <clears throat> I'm just gonna get a little water. <laughs> <clears throat> Oh, sorry, everybody. Eurydice. My mother, 23, is married to Balanchine. The nights he spends absorbed at work on Orpheus, she feels alone and stays at home, stitching an Indian patterned skirt. But when she dances Eurydice's last pas de deux, she wraps her arms and legs around her poet husband, Orpheus, willing him to look into her eyes. As Balanchine writes, tormented because she cannot be seen by the man she loves. Attempting to seduce, she begs him with her dance until he tears away his mask. Then she sinks down to earth and dies. During rehearsal, Stravinsky asks, how long to die? In the score, he scratches five counts. 
her husband, armed with song, lays siege, and chants the gods to claim her back, vowing he will not look, but she persuades him. Therefore Orpheus throws off his mask and loses her. His mask becomes a liar. Mother, when I was young, I watched you from the wings and saw the sweat dripping from arms and neck, your gasp for breath. I thought it was your last, but no, you towel off and then step back into the spotlight, smiling. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Elise. Now we have a surprise guest, originally not on the program. The actress who played the lead role of Molly Burkhart in Martin Scorsese's film, Killers of the Flower Moon, and who today's event has particularly a special personal significance. I'd like to welcome to the stage, Lily Gladstone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for being here. Okay, next so coex. Nyt on itään ku pitaki. Mahto to sikse keit sitapi. Mahto to mikeistu. Hello, my friends. My name is Lily Gladstone, Eagle Woman. I'm from the Blackfeet Nation, descended from Chief Red Crow. Um, his third great-granddaughter, uh, Red Crow, was a signatory of Treaty 7 in Canada. So uh, my family is very happy <laughs> um, to, uh, to have this relationship that's been built. And because of this current strike, the actor strike. I can't speak to everything that I would wish to say up here under other circumstances, but I am also a person. I was once a young, uh, chubby, <laughs> extroverted, um, performative kid, go figure. I, um, not many people know this, but long before I ever had aspirations to be an actress, I wanted to be a ballerina. And I pursued this dance for quite a while, uh, not as long as these beautiful Osage ballerinas that were on stage. I made it to the end of my first year in point shoes before I decided maybe there was another way that I could perform. Um, <laughs> so uh, I was so blessed to, you know, just be up here. First, I just have to say because I can't speak really as an actress for why I'm here, but I can speak as a human being. Just, uh, I want to say just way we know. Uh, thank you, Wajaji, for embracing me as a human. Um, I am always, I always feel so welcome to come back. Um, when I first stepped foot here, I was welcomed uh, by my language instructor, instructor Chris Cote. Um, he, uh, he asked if I wanted to see anything, and the first place I asked to go see was the Tall Chief Mansion in Fairfax. Um, so as, uh, you know, as life brings you together with people, I was able to meet Elise, Maria's daughter, and in our first conversation, I let her know that I actually, as a nine-year-old, had written a letter to her mother. So I'm up here to read that letter. <laughs> This was a school assignment. Um, I got a, I think I got an A on it. <laughs> um, so I just also want to say since I was, you know, this was a school assignment, so I never actually occurred to me or my teacher to ever send it to Maria. So I'm very happy that I can be here and share these words with Elise, with the Tall Chief family. This, uh, this lady right here, um, she inspired me as a young little res kid to 
chase my passion, to never give up on my passion. And it was so wonderful seeing all you little kids up here earlier and you beautiful dancers living that. So, um, yeah. Dear Maria Tallchief, I just finished reading your biography, Maria Tallchief, American Ballerina by Adele de Louis. I'm Indian too, but I'm not Osage. I'm Blackfeet. Anyways, I'm a ballet dancer too. I especially liked it when you opened the package and found the ring with the two rubies from Sasha. I hope one day I will grow up to be like you because I want to be a famous ballerina too. How do you like the Ballet Russe? Were you very disappointed that you didn't get to dance in the Lady Green and the Lady in Green? If you were, don't feel bad. I felt bad when I didn't get a main part in Swan Lake, Montana. <laughs> By the way, have you heard of my ballet teacher, Mara Salloway? <laughs> oh, I haven't told you yet that I won a gold medal and a second place trophy in the two competitions I've been to. One was in Seattle, Washington, and one was in Butte, Montana. Well, gotta go now, nice talking to you. <laughs> Sincerely yours, your biggest fan, Lily Gladstone. <laughs> oh. Thank you so much. That letter's a framer. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, Iksukapi, Wewina, Mado, thank you all. Um, stay dry. <laughs> Now that's a tough act to follow, but we have just the person. Our next guest, Misty Copeland, earned the rank of principal dancer with American Ballet Theater, becoming the first black woman to be promoted to the position in the company's 75 year history. In addition to performing the most iconic roles in ballet, she also performed with Prince, as well as Taylor Swift. <laughs> Her production company, Life in Motion Productions, focuses on bringing representative stories of artists, past, present, and future, and normalizing the arts experience. Misty is an avid philanthropist and an ambassador of the Boys and Girls Clubs of America, of which she is also an alum. She is the New York Times best-selling author of Life in Motion, Ballerina Body, Black Ballerinas, and a picture book titled Bunheads. She is also author of the award-winning children's picture book, Firebird. Misty's newest book, The Wind at My Back, is a tribute to her late mentor and friend, the pioneering ballerina, Raven Wilkinson. Please help me in welcoming Misty Copeland to the stage. Wow, that is a tough act to follow, both of you. <laughs> well, first, I just I, I want to say thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of such a special moment. Um, I, n I never imagined that I would have any chance of being connected to Maria Tallchief in any way. Um, but I just want to say thank you to Elise, thank you Russ, and the Tallchief family. <laughs> thank you for your openness and passion in keeping Maria's legacy alive. And I feel privileged to be here today in celebration of both Maria and Marjorie Tallchief who have left an indelible mark on the world of ballet and likewise on our American history. Today is my third day here in Tulsa and regretfully, I didn't know enough about this unbelievable place and its history before this visit. But what I've seen and learned has shown me what strength, community and love look like. When I think of those words, I think of ballet 
because that's what it has been for and given me, and what ultimately led me to Maria Tallchief, a woman who not only inspired me in my interpretation of the role of Firebird, but a woman who set the stage for countless dancers and whose legacy extends well beyond ballet. I couldn't be prouder to have a ballerina and more importantly, one who represents so much to so many be the new representative in the 2023 American Women Quarters series. <laughs> Her legacy demonstrates the enduring power of dance to connect, uplift, and inspire. And we celebrate her today here in Tulsa as an Osage woman, a ballerina, and an American icon. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Misty. Our next speaker, C. Callie Martin, is head of collections, care, and stewardship at the Smithsonian National Museum of the American Indian. Her primary responsibilities include preservation and stewardship of the collections housed at NMAI's three facilities and facilitating access to collections by communities of origin across the Western Hemisphere. She is an enrolled member of the Osage Nation and of the Ka. She is also of German descent. In addition to her nearly 10 years at the Smithsonian, she previously served as collections manager at the Osage Nation Museum in Pahaska. Ladies and gentlemen, C. Callie Martin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hawe and good afternoon. I'm Callie Martin and I'm an enrolled member of the Osage Nation and consider Oklahoma to be my home. I am deeply honored and delighted to be here today representing the Smithsonian National Museum of the American Indian as well as the Smithsonian American Women's History Museum. I wanna start off by thanking our partners, Chief Standing Bear, Elise Passion and the Tall Chief family, the people of the Osage Nation the U.S. Treasury and the U.S. Mint, and the Tulsa Historical Society and Museum. Today's event celebrating the Maria Tallchief Quarter and the rededication of the Marjorie Tallchief statue are possible only because of your hard work and collaboration. When the U.S. Congress authorized the Circulating Collectible Coin Act of 2020, creating the U.S. Mint's American Women Quarters Program, the legislation specified that the Smithsonian American Women's History Museum would con consult. We at the Smithsonian have been honored to participate in the selection of honorees for the American Women Quarters, as well as the creation of events to celebrate each honoree and her life, accomplishments, and legacy. The Smithsonian American Women's History Museum expands the story of America through the often untold accounts and accomplishments of women, both individually and collectively, to better understand our past and inspire our future. Maria's story is a vital part of the American narrative, and the museum will share stories like Maria's and show how indigenous women are at the heart of our nation. Maria's story is incredibly personal to me as well. I really admired her growing up. Um, she was an inspiration to me in the ballet studio and throughout my own decades of dance. Seeing an Osage woman command such a presence around the world added an element and connection of pride for me. The representation of women and of Native Americans in our nation and around the globe matters. That change starts not just within the museum's walls, but with changing who we see on American coins. So I would like to give a final thanks to Elise, to the Osage people, the Wajaje people, for allowing us to share Maria's story with everyone who picks up one of these quarters. Thank you.
Thank you, Callie. As we come to the conclusion of our formal program, representing the United States Mint today is Michelle Thompson. Since joining the U.S. Mint in 2015, Michelle has led numerous strategic marketing initiatives, including the annual holiday and military campaigns, and has been instrumental in developing and implementing a new program management office, which she currently serves as chief. Thompson is currently the program lead for the American Women Quarters Program, a multi-year coin program honoring diverse accomplishments and contributions of prominent women. In this role, she leads a cross-functional team of experts through the ideation, strategic development, and overall execution of this groundbreaking initiative. Ladies and gentlemen, from the United States Mint, Michelle Thompson. Thank you so much for being here. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, Russ, for that very kind introduction. It is a pleasure to join all of you in celebrating the release of the Maria Tall Chief Quarter. I'm incredibly humbled and honored to be a part of this today. I would like to thank the Osage Nation for welcoming us, the Tulsa Historical Society and Museum for sharing this incredible space with us, as well as Maria Tall Chief's family and the Smithsonian American Women's History Museum for working with us so diligently on this very special event. Recognizing and honoring women on our nation's coinage is vital because our coins tell the American story. They reflect who we are as a nation and what matters to us. And women matter. For the first time in history, the United States Mint is issuing circulating quarters through a coin program solely dedicated to honoring the achievements of American women. We're introducing five different designs annually from 2022 through 2025. So that's 20 American women who will be honored in this program. This diverse group of women honored through the American Women Quarters Program reflect a wide range of accomplishments and fields. The honorees have truly shaped our nation's history and have helped pave the way for generations that followed. Now at the Mint, we see the work we do as connecting America through coins. It is our distinct pleasure today to connect Americans to Maria Tallchief, America's first major prima ballerina. She broke barriers as a Native American ballet dancer, and she exhibited strength and resilience both on stage and off. The coins that the Mint produces are miniature pieces of art. Our talented pool of artists continually amaze in how they express the values, the aspirations, and shared heritage of a nation, all on a canvas the size of a quarter. The 10th coin of the American Women Quarters Program honors the life and legacy of Maria Tallchief. You can see the blow up of it here. If I hold up a single quarter, you're not gonna see any of the details that went into this remarkable coin but it was designed by Artistic Infusion Program artist Ben Sowards and then sculpted by United States Mint Chief Engraver Joe Mena. The reverse, or the tail side of the coin as you guys know it, depicts Maria Tallchief spotlit in balletic pose. Her Osage name, which as we've heard translates to two standards, is written in the Osage orthography. Unifying the entire coin program is an obverse, or the head side of the coin, designed by one of the most iconic female sculptors of the early 20th, 20th century, Laura Garden Fraser. These pioneering women, honored in the American Women Quarters Program, represent vastly different fields of endeavors, talents, and skills, yet they all share a significant commonality. Their contributions of these women were groundbreaking. They had a lasting impact on society and none of them ever settled or accepted the status quo. All of our honorees influenced others and paved the way for each new generation. We hope their stories inspire you and connect you to the history we all share. At this time, I would like to invite Chief Standing Bear to join me at the podium.
Chief Standing Bear, thank you. On behalf of the United States Mint, I am pleased to present two American women quarters in this shadow box, one from each of our production facilities in Denver and Philadelphia. Can I say something? Absolutely, please. <laughs> This will proudly be given to our Osage Museum so all of our people can continue in the spirit of the Tall Chief Sisters and the spirit that you have shown in honoring us. Thank you. Thank you. Also, at this point, love to invite Cray Beaumont Flynn to join me at the podium. <laughs> Mr. Beaumont Flynn, on behalf of the United States Mint, I am pleased to present the shadow box to the Tulsa Historical Society and Museum. Thank you so much for helping us to celebrate the launch of this American Women Quarters honoring Maria Char Talchi. Thank you. Now this is always my favorite part of these events because I am excited to share that we brought along a little something for all of you. Everyone will receive a commemorative coin board to collect all five American women quarters for 2023. And we have already gotten you started with your own Maria Tall Chief quarter. Please visit the mint table in the museum to, sp to pick up this special keepsake. So we're nearly at the end of today's ceremony, but there is one more thing we'd like to do today, and that's a coin pour. We brought with us 2,000 Maria Talchief quarters that will be poured into the beautiful display that you see here on stage. I'd like to invite Treasurer Malerba, Chief Standing Bear, Elise Passion, Misty Copeland, and Callie Martin to join me on stage. As they gather, you might see here some beaded point shoes. The coin pour will fall from ballet point shoes gifted to Misty Copeland by Dance Maker Studios and its students in Pahuska, led by Randy Tinker Smith and Jenna LaViolette. The point shoes were beaded by Dana Bear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dana is an enrolled member of the Osage Nation. She's from the Gray Horse District, which Maria and Marjorie belong to as well. She is the great, great granddaughter of Eliza Big Heart and Alex Tall Chief, which makes her the great niece of Marjorie and Maria Tall Chief. And she works as an artist and has work on display in positive spaces in Tulsa and Big Rain Gallery owned by Addie Roanhorse in Pahuska. Thank you, Dana.
now we're going to clear the stage. Our tail dancers are back there. <laughs> I hear the bells back here, which means our tail dancers have arrived, probably just now. <laughs> Those bells symbolize rain, by the way. That drum is the thunder. Elise shared with us that her mother loved watching us dance at the Ilongshka. Now, she loved tail dancers in particular, <laughs> as do I. So we invited our gray horse tail dancers to come and honor Marie and Marjorie with a song. Now, uh, these tail dancers do not have these positions outside of our Ilongshka. This is a, a very special position that they have earned in our Ilonchka, and they're selected by the drum keeper. Our current drum keeper at Grey Horse is named George Shaw, and he selected these tail dancers. We have Dylan Moore, Xavier Tohey, and Joe Ellis with us today. And thank you for taking care of the stage. It's a little slick up here. I almost fell, did you see? <laughs> Thanks, gentlemen. They'll be joined with our singers, led by Scott George. And we'll be singing the Henry Tall Chief song. Now, this song is only sung once a year on Sunday, which is our family day at our dances. So this is a very special occasion. So this is a very special moment for that song to have a presence outside of our ceremonies, but this is certainly a special occasion. So please join me in welcoming our gray horse tail dancers.
Thank you, gentlemen. Dylan Moore, Joe Ellis, Xavier Tohey. This is the best of the best right here. Doesn't get any better dancing than this right here. Right here, Gray Horse Tail Dancers. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming. Appreciate you. Watch your step. If we could invite the family back up, Natalie, Adrian, Gail, and Jackie, Elise, Alexandra, Stuart. When we put a blanket on someone, that's our way of honoring them. You've seen us put blankets on our guest speakers, and so that's our way of saying thank you, that you honor us. So we wanted to put blankets on the family as well. And if Cray Beaumont Flynn could come up as well, and Tali Redcorn. How about this beautiful family? Thank you so much for honoring us with your presence. Thank you so much for being here to celebrate Maria and Marjorie Tall Chief Day. Thank you all so much for being here. And just wanted to recognize Jackie Skabeen. Welcome back. <laughs> Jackie Skabeen. And now we'd like to invite you to come inside or stay outside. We have events going on for the rest of the afternoon. Elise has a book signing coming up. And then we also have another performance from Wajaji Ballet and the Deposka students. So stick around, there's more to come. Thank you all very much. Away we na and gakona. Thank you singers.